All right, guys. Me and Amanda. Mm -hmm. We just got to um, the Central Center for Advanced Medicine. Sierra Women's Health. Yes, whatever. <laughs> um, it says Center for Advanced Medicine on the building. Mm -hmm. And today is the day. What is? What are we doing today? We are finding out if the bump is a boy or a girl. Green or blue? What? It's going to be a boy. So blue or pink? Ro, that's right. That's right. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> okay, so let's go inside and... Uh, Gross. <laughs> she has to she has to bring that sample every time she comes here. It's it's gross. They have to check to make sure we're healthy. You're healthy. They're not checking to make sure I'm healthy. So we're gonna find out if we're having a boy, which is a noise with dirt and grass stains on it. What? Or a girl, which is a beagle wrapped in sunshine and glitter. That's the definition of a boy and girl. No. The no. definition of a boy is a superior species. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you excited? Mm -hmm. What do you want? I, I mean, I'm okay either way, but I kind of want a girl. Uh, red or what color hair? Red for a girl. Red hair. So, so is it possible for? Amanda. Oh, that's us. So even though I eat candy all day, I, I'm still good because I'm not, I'm not pre-diabetic. Right? She, she came in and she was like, I was hungry. She had a bag of seized candy. Well, I. If you do I that every day, we might be in trouble. But every now and then. I'm actually. Not. I lose. Keep them on. Okay, so what do you want? You said a girl mm -hmm. with red hair. Mm -hmm. A girl with red hair. Okay. Or a boy with brown. Well, dark. So you hair. either want a spitting image of you or yeah. a spitting image of. Okay, so here's my question. And if you could tell me in the comments below, I don't know. But. Could we have a little girl with red hair in my skin tone? No, it doesn't work like that. Are you sure? Yeah, redheads have light skin. Could could this be like a miracle, baby, that we don't? Because if we have a little kid, a little boy, uh -huh. that has red hair and real light skin, I'm gonna be pissed. Why? He will not be my favorite. Why? Because he's not gonna be able to play outside and do fun things outside like little boys with like regular skin. You put sunscreen on them, are you kidding? SPF 1000, do they make that? No, you just put it on them more than once. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I'm> fine. <laughs> what, Hi. Whatever child we have, I want it to have my skin tone so they can ride motorcycles. Oh Lord, we're, we're debating like on whether we're going to have a redhead that has fair skin or not. Oh gosh, well, that, I can't tell that with ultrasound, sorry to say. <gasps> Alright. All right. Sure. Is that the baby? Yeah. Oh, it's been moving a lot. Good. I've been trying to get Lauren to be able to feel it. So, this is the baby's what's called cord insertion in the baby's belly button. When babies are about seven oh. weeks along, we herniate their intestines into the umbilical cord. They grow and rotate, and by 12 weeks, it all gets sucked back inside, and the anterior abdominal wall fuse is closed. So that's proof that that happened correctly for your baby. <laughs> this is your baby's belly. Babies practice swallowing and breathing amniotic fluids, so we always have to see the stomach. Sometimes babies with Down syndrome will have two black circles right next to each other. I only see one where your baby's is. I'd like to take measurements of the baby's head, belly, and legs to make sure that it's growing appropriately. So we'll do that. The color of your baby's bowel looks normal to me. Sometimes babies with Down syndrome, their bowel is really, really bright, like as bright as those bones. Mm -hmm. But your baby's looks normal. So it's a spinal cord? Uh huh. Well, spinal column. What's different? Oh, column. You can't really yeah. see the cord. Fair enough. These are the. <laughs> These are the posterior elements and anterior elements that are going to eventually become the vertebrae. 
If I look at the spine in three different planes, it looks like a nice little railroad track going all the way up and down the baby. If there's going to be a defect in the baby's spine, it's usually down here at the base of the baby. So we'll look at that really closely. neck. I don't see any masses or anything there. This is good. So this is the lens in the baby's eye. This is what we used to focus near and far. Oh, okay. And then when we get old and have to have cataracts replaced, that's what gets replaced. But sometimes babies are born without that lens, so I just want to make sure I can see it. Mm -hmm. This is one baby's hand and the other hand is over there. So I know we have two hands. This is a really obscure picture, but this is the tip of the baby's nose. This is one nostril, the other nostril, and the baby's upper lip. Oh my God. All right, <laughs> sure, yeah, whatever. Um, but what I'm looking for is to see whether or not I think the baby has a hole in its lip or cleft lip, and I don't think so. I think I can see both booger holes pretty nice and round there. Now the baby can still have a cleft palate. I can't see that with ultrasound, mm -hmm. but I don't see anything that looks like a cleft lip. What does that mean? What's a cleft palate? Well, there's a hole in the roof of the mouth. Oh, okay. Okay. But I can see both bigger holes nice and round right there. See a little hand giving us a finger? <laughs> um, oh, the nice. nice thing about seeing that is that there's a chromosomal defect called trisomy 18. Those babies always have their hands clenched like this with the thumb right. overriding the fingers. They never open up their hands. Mm. So when I can see that, that's actually a good thing. Okay. So we saw two hands, and that looks like there's two feet as well. There's a nice little arch in the bottom of that foot, that same disorder where the hands are clenched. The yeah. bottom of those baby's feet are rounded like the bottom of a rocking chair. So again, I'd like to see that arch. It was a really good looking foot. <laughs> well, yeah. I like it. I like it. Me too. And I don't think that your baby has clubbed feet. It looks like they're kind of crossed at the ankle. There they can know. become clubbed later just because there's not enough room for them. But today they appear, don't appear to be clubbed. So that's good. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, Apple Watch. <laughs> it's to be buy me a pony. No, it's buy me any Apple product. So this is the back part of the baby's brain. This is called the cerebellum. And this should measure in millimeters close to what you are in weeks, and it does. There's another little hole right here where the spinal cord leaves the skull called the cisterna magna, and that should never measure more than a centimeter, and it does not. So the back part of the baby's brain looks good to me. <laughs> little arm. <laughs> so there's a shoulder, cute little ear right there, mm -hmm. and the elbow. This is a region in the baby's brain called the atrium. It's where all the cerebral spinal fluid comes together. That should never measure more than nine millimeters. If it does, then we worry about water on the baby's brain or hydrocephalus. But your baby's measure is fine. The shape of your baby's skull is normal to me. Sometimes babies who have holes in their spine, their skulls get pinched in in the front and look like a lemon. Mm -hmm. But your baby's looks fine. Oh, yeah, no, we want to have the largest vaginal. No, we don't. So 11.5. Can I, can I hope for that? Is that healthy? Do you ever want her vagina to look the same again? Uh, do you want to poop on herself for the rest of her life? No. Then do, I wouldn't wish for that. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Just saying. Because with big babies come problems with the perineum and rectum and things like that. So this is the baby's umbilical cord. There's three vessels in it. There's two arteries and one vein. That's the normal complement. Sometimes if there's just one artery and one vein, that can be associated with other birth defects. Mm -hmm. Little hand right there. Cute little hand. 
<laughs> well, he got all his fingers. Yep. Or his. Solution. I haven't decided yet. Well, no soon. So these two slightly dark, darker gray circles, there's one right here and one right there, those are the baby's kidneys. Hmm. Babies make amniotic fluid by going pee, and then they practice swallowing it and breathing it, so we always have to make sure we see the kidneys. Sometimes babies with down, they'll have some dilation in their kidneys, but I don't see any on your baby. This is your baby's bladder. I'm impressed that you know what you're looking at. <laughs> Well, I'm a trained professional. Don't try to sit down. The only thing I can distinguish is arms and legs. <laughs> right. And the head. So this is the baby's long leg bone, the femur, and it's nice and long and straight. Sometimes babies with chromosomal problems, their long bones are already much shorter than they should be. But your baby's looks fine. Do you already know? No, I don't. Okay. But now I might. So this is a butt cheek, <laughs> and a butt cheek, mm -hmm. and a butt crack. And I don't see much here, so that's usually the girl sign. Uh, but I'm going to keep looking because <laughs> your baby hasn't been super duper cooperative as far as that's concerned. Oh, well. Of course that would be the case. Right. <laughs> it is my child. <laughs> is that the heart? The yeah. Moving part? So this is one of the two views I need to see. It's called a four chamber view. There's two on the top and two on the bottom and they look essentially symmetrical with each other. So when I can see this view plus one other one called an outflow track, then that usually rules out about half of the really bad heart defects, the ones we don't want born here and we know. Mm -hmm. um, when babies turn into mammals and start breathing oxygen, then sometimes heart defects can show up. Usually we can rule out most of them with those two views. Whoa, whoa. So this is the umbilical cord going into the placenta. We saw the other end into her belly, mm -hmm. and this is the other end going into the placenta, so that's in a good spot. All of a sudden, there was color. <laughs> <laughs> so in this view here you can see this black line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the diaphragm for breathing muscle and it looks like the stomach is below the level of the heart and on the same side of the baby as the heart so I don't believe that there's a hole in that breathing muscle so here's the stomach here's the heart and this is that breathing muscle. Um, sometimes babies can develop what's called a diaphragmatic hernia later in the pregnancy, but I don't see anyone today. Did, did you hear what she said? Her? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going with for now. 
subject to change. So this is that other view of the heart that I need to see. It's called the right ventricular outflow track, and that's what that's supposed to look like. Now I'm looking at these little bones back here. So those bones have a normal spacing and the skin edge looks nice and intact all the way up and down the baby. And if there's going to be a defect in the spine, it would usually be down here at the base of the baby. Typical amigurl sign, those little lines right there. What, what are the little lines? The, her labia. Oh. <laughs> Told you, you can only have girls. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you fine? That's a pretty wide open shot. Not seeing many dinglies. Right, so I'm gonna. I'll say I'm 80% sure it's a girl. How's that? <laughs> 